Okay, so a few things to start off this video. Firstly, thank you to those in yesterday's Laval, Brendan Gallagher, Carrie Price video who commented, Imagine Dragons. That means a lot to me. I appreciate it. If you want a chance to be featured in the next one, then hey, stick around to the end. Secondly, I want to get this out of the way right here because this video is going to cater to the majority of the Habs fans that actually check out these YouTube videos. And as a result, I wanted to give my little piece as to whether or not we're going to be streaming the games because, yeah... As you've kind of noticed, the streams haven't really been popping up on the channel lately, and a lot of that does kind of have to do with motivation. Streaming is fun. I like going out there and talking to you on a personal level with the chat. I love the interaction, and I love the overall growth opportunities that exist with streaming. But... There are a few things that come with streaming that a content creator has to deal with, especially here on YouTube. YouTube algorithm gets a little bit wonky when you go out there and you introduce live streams into your schedule. That hasn't really been a problem before, but it is something that is present and you do need to compensate for with other uploads. Secondly, when it comes to streaming in particular, the overall time commitment is something that has really started to bug me as of late. Because I'm a guy who, when I'm not exposed to my very limited recreational time, I'm thinking about hockey all the time. I'm thinking about topics to talk about, I'm making thumbnails, I'm recording gameplay, I'm doing so much to perform on this YouTube channel and to uphold the product that is the videos we create here. And streaming is something that I noticed takes about two and a half to three hours per game, and when you manage a YouTube channel like this one where you make videos every day and the consistency is part of the niche, Two and a half to three hours is a lot, man. Like, that is a big chunk of time that gets moved around when we go out there and we dedicate a few hours to a stream. Even the same thing goes for the hype streams, because for Vancouver Canucks stuff, first and foremost, sometimes I record our regular videos in between the periods and the intermissions, because... It's just squeezing that extra bit of time, you know, investing what is already time that I have towards the game into other parts of the channel because I want to condense the amount of time that I stay up late at night editing videos. So overall, I'm not really too sure what we're going to do for streaming here for the 2021 playoffs. I don't even know if I'm going to be awake for the Canadians and the Leaf games when they go on because they're going to be on at like four or whatever. But that's just kind of my little piece here talking about streaming. Sorry if it took up too much of your time here. It's like two minutes and four. 40 seconds already into the video, but I just wanted to get that off of my chest. But going over the Canadians and what is going to be probably the final update before the playoffs actually begin, we had ourselves some news yesterday. Yes, yesterday. I'm recording this the night of Tuesday, May 18th. We had ourselves what was the final Montreal Canadiens Black Aces list set in stone, as well as... Oh man, a few other decisions that people got really up in arms about. Now, I will say the biggest one so far has been the proposition of playing Eric Stahl over Cole Caulfield and Jesperi Kotkaniemi. We already made a video about that specifically and discussing the two sides as to why you would want to do that. Why would you want to play Eric Stahl, a veteran who has won a cup, who has done all this, over Kotkaniemi and Caulfield who have come over here as guys who are still new to the league, still inexperienced and all that. We've discussed the for and against it. Why, obviously, I mean, Canadians fans are really upset because Kotkaniemi and Caulfield are both playing players that I think people can agree on have displayed more with the Canadians than Eric Stahl in particular has. But another big piece of news has come about in terms of who is actually going to play and who is going to sit out, and that comes in the form of Alexander Romanov. Now, Romanov, or Romanov, whichever you want to say it is, he is a guy that has been hyped up by Canadians fans for years. You know how Caulfield had that huge hype train where we could just make a video about him in any respect and people would come over and give us conversation in the comments? Yeah, Romanov was kind of in that same ballpark, especially during his time in in the World Juniors and in the KHL, dominating that scene. But eventually, he made his way over to the Habs, he played his rookie season, was pretty alright. A lot better in the first half than in the second half, I would say. Second half saw a lot more mistakes and a lot less of a presence of mind, I would say, within the player profile. But I mean, 
He's a rookie, right? He's just 20-ish years old. He's got a lot of time to iron out what is going to be a very long, hopefully, NHL career with the Canadians. But we had ourselves the big news that no, Alexander Romanov is not going to be playing for the Canadians in Game 1 we are going to have John Merrill inserted into the lineup instead. And this was a really interesting decision, in my opinion, because John Merrill's a guy whom, as we kind of noted in the video talking about the initial trade, because John Merrill is indeed a former Red Wing, and I, as a guy who is a tertiary Red Wings fan, was always a big fan of the idea that Iserman can just go out there and trade whatever for draft picks, and that's exactly what they did with John Merrill when they sent him over to Detroit at the trade deadline. But for John Merrill specifically, he's a guy who has come over here in the Canadians organization, and I'm going to be honest, man, he hasn't really been perfect in his time in Montreal. He did spend some time with Alex Romanov earlier on in the season, and some of those plays, man, just really not all too great. You talk about how Alexander Romanov himself kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of the season. Well, John Merrill certainly didn't help, and the way they played together was almost like a... What is it? What's the opposite of a mutualism relationship? Yeah, they just really didn't work well, and John Merrill was in a spot where a lot of mistakes that he made were also kind of the same magnitude as to Alexander Romanov, so the fact that you're willingly keeping Merrill in here, pairing him with Weber of all people, and having Alexander Romanov out is an interesting decision if you're asking me personally. We also had Dominique Ducharme saying specifically that he is not afraid to lean on the depth of the roster should the current roster not yield any results. He actually said 100%. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Going to get Kotkaniemi, Caulfield, and Romanov in because we have options for these guys. And just the overall decision to choose these players as the in ones and choose the other players as the out ones. Eric Stahl, John Merrill, and all that instead of Kotkaniemi, Caulfield, and Romanov. Oh boy, that's a really interesting lineup they're going to ice for Game 1 against Toronto. We already made a video the other day talking about all the options on why you would want to make this kind of decision, and if you're going to talk about maturity, psychological things, experience, and all that, okay, it's one game, the Canadians are going to be in a spot where it honestly kind of feels like they're playing just not to lose, and who knows if a Kotkaniemi or a Caulfield and their inexperience is what's ultimately going to cause a brutal turnover that eventually results in an overtime win for Toronto in Game 1 or whatever. I don't know, that might be the rationale behind it, but either way, when you take a look at the Canadians, this is the roster they have. We also had another update talking about the Black Aces list. This is Renault Lavoie coming out here talking about Alex Belzeal, Laurent Dauphin, Lucas Vegdemo, Jesse Yelonen. Okay, that's a great one right there. Love that guy. Then on defense, Kale Fleury, Otto Leskinen, Xavier Ouellette, and then for the goalies, you have McNiven and Caden Primo. So these are the guys that are going to be on the reserve reserve list. There's no taxi squad in the playoffs because there isn't really a cap in the playoffs, so there's no need to have a taxi squad. This is the Black Aces, and as we're familiar with from the bubble last year, we have ourselves a list of reserve players that can come in if anybody gets injured or whatnot. So... Even though you have the scratches, Caulfield, Kotchenyemi, Romanov, you still have these black aces on the other list behind them, just in case even more players get taken out. Actually, yeah, no, I guess Michael Froelich is also in that conversation too, yeah, because he was also skating on what was the fifth line in practice with Kotchenyemi and Caulfield. So ultimately, talk to me in the comments what you think about these overall combinations, because this appears to be what we're going to see for Game 1. Game 1 is going to be tomorrow at the time of this video's upload. Again, not really too sure if I'm going to do a stream. If we don't do a stream, we might do a recap video, might just talk about it, because those videos take a lot less time to make, and the overall time commitment towards making a video like that isn't as grand as a full-on stream. During a full-on stream, I have to actually watch the game, I have to actually chat with you, I have to actually stay committed to the stream for two and a half hours. If I'm just talking about the game afterwards, hey, I can watch the game, but during the commercials, I can look up another topic, I can make a thumbnail, I can record another piece of audio in the intermission, something like that. That's what I'm talking about with the distribution of time, the investment of time as a guy here with no schooling, just just sitting at home still in quarantine. My vaccination date is in a few weeks, so I'm going to get that done. 
Man, you know what they say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Talk to me in the comments if you made it to the end of this video. Whatever it is you predict the series is going to be, Leafs in 5, Leafs in 6, Habs in 7, Guy Lafleur thinks the Canadians are going to win, so that's good, but whatever it is your prediction, just let me know in the comments. That's going to be the comment section keyword that's your chance to get featured in the next Canadians video, whenever that may be. But talk to me about all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this. This is 99. And bye.